we want to find the exact components of the vector using the angle shown below. So notice how we're given the magnitude of the vector is 36, and we're assuming the initial point of this vector is at the origin, and therefore this would be the y-axis, and this would be the x-axis. For the vector v with a known magnitude that makes an angle theta with the positive x-axis, then the vector v has an x component of the magnitude times cosine theta, and a y component of the magnitude times sine theta. So the angle theta must be formed with the positive x-axis. So notice how for this vector, theta will not be 60 degrees. The most obvious positive angle that we would use for theta would be this angle here. That would be 180 plus 30, or 210 degrees. Or the most obvious negative angle would be negative 90 minus 60, negative 150 degrees. Notice how regardless of which angle we use, the reference angle would be 30 degrees, the angle between the x-axis and this vector. So to find the components of vector p, we'll say vector p is equal to, let's say the magnitude of vector p times the vector with an x component of cosine theta and a y component of sine theta. Let's go ahead and use 210 degrees for theta. So we'll say vector p is equal to, we know the magnitude of vector p is given, it's 36. And then our vector will have an x component of cosine 210 degrees and a y component of sine 210 degrees. Now to find these trig function values, we could use a unit circle or a reference triangle. Let's show both. Notice how if we sketched a reference triangle here, we would have a 30, 60, 90 reference triangle, which I've also sketched here. And again, we know the reference angle is 30 degrees. So we can label the short leg one, the hypotenuse two, and the longer leg square root three. But now because we're in the third quadrant, where both x and y are negative, we would make this negative square root three and this negative one. Notice how this represents the negative x coordinate, this represents the negative y coordinate. And therefore, to find the cosine of 210 degrees using our reference triangle, we'd have the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, which would be negative square root three divided by two, and the sine of 210 degrees would be the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse, which would be negative one divided by two. So this would give us vector p equals 36 times the vector with x component of, again, cosine 210 is negative square root three divided by two, and sine 210 degrees is equal to negative one half. Now we'll perform the scalar multiplication. Vector p would have an x component of 36 or 36 over one times negative square root three over two, and the y component would be 36 over one times negative one half. And we'll simplify before multiplying. Common factor of two between two and 36, there's one, two, and two, 18 twos and 36, and the same here. One, two, and two, and 18 twos and 36. So notice how the x component would be 18 times negative square root three, or negative 18 square root three, and the y component would be 18 times negative one, or negative 18. This would be the component form of our vector p, given here on the coordinate plane. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we could have found these trig function values on the unit circle. Let's quickly show that as well. For 210 degrees, the initial side is here, and we can see the terminal side would be here. And therefore, our cosine function value is equal to the x-coordinate, and our sine function value is equal to the y-coordinate. So cosine 210 degrees is equal to negative square root three over two, and sine 210 degrees is equal to negative one half. The same trig function values we found using our reference triangle. I hope you found this helpful.